Lessons 1 through 5 are in one file. Lessons 6, uh, 7, and 8, which are the photosynthesis ones, are in another downloadable file. And I always separate the notes like that so that you can easily find the piece that you're looking for and you don't always have to print out 10 chapters worth of notes when you really only want one day worth. Uh, so if you're looking for these, uh, where I showed you earlier today on my website, uh, this is section 5.1 and 5.2 of the textbook. It's about photosynthesis. That's where you'll find all of these notes if you'd like the downloadable version. So this first lesson is where we're really going to focus on the energetic processes that happen during photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So I took the Red Bull logo, changed the word Red Bull to photosynthesis, and made the title of this lesson, Photosynthesis and Cellular Respiration Give Me Wings, because I thought it would be funny, but no one's laughing, so that's fine. Thank you. Now. I would not expect you to redraw an entire diagram of a plant or an animal cell. I would not be able to draw a nice looking one from scratch either. Uh, but in your textbook, uh, on page 154 and 155, there are some beautiful diagrams of plant and animal cells. Now I'm bringing this up to remind you that we're talking about biology. I will refer to parts of the cell. And in this particular unit, there are two parts of the cell that interest me the most. A chloroplast, there's the word, and a mitochondrion. Now, you may have heard the word mitochondria. That is the plural of mitochondrion. If I'm talking about one of them, that's what it is. Uh, and so those are the two organelles that interest me the most. Inside of a cell, you can usually recognize a mitochondria because it's oval and it has a wavy line on the inside. Chloroplasts have a number of different representations. I've seen them drawn a few different ways. They always have a somewhat oval shape. So this would be the chloroplast here. And they'll either have little circles or little flat lines in them. And that's because what's really inside of a chloroplast, like you would have read, are some flattened disks. So if we're looking at it from one side, it looks more like circles. If we're looking at it from the other side, it looks more like just a bunch of flat pieces. So this would be an alternate way to represent a chloroplast. So what I'm trying to give you is different uh, artist representations of what these organelles look like so that when I ask you about them on a quest or on a test, you know which one you're looking at. Now you would have read, as you were going through that section, that there are some names for the pieces that are inside each of these organelles. And these names will be important. In the chloroplast, there is the space in between all of the flattened disks, and there are the flattened disks. The space is called the stroma. Now, the flattened disks go by two different names. Each individual piece is called a thylakoid, which I noticed some people struggling to pronounce, thylakoid. Thylakoid membranes or simply just thylakoids is fine. And if I was to take several thylakoids together, we refer to that as the granum, or the plural of that is grana. That is the name of each of the internal parts of a chloroplast. You need to know those words. So you need to be able to recognize that a chloroplast is made up of the stroma, which is the fluid, the, the fluid that surrounds all of the thylakoids. Each individual little sac is a thylakoid. A stack of them or a collection of them is called a granum or a grana if you want to use the plural form. Now in the mitochondrion, we have two things that we'll name. We have the wavy line, which is a membrane and we have the space inside of it. The wavy line, the membrane, is called the cristae, and the space inside of the wavy line is called the matrix. I 
And those are the two internal parts of the mitochondrion that I would require you to be aware of. So you should be able to recognize in a picture of a cell where those two organelles are, and then individually what the internal pieces of each of the organelles is. Does anyone want to ask any questions about that so far? Yes. The matrix, the bottom word, Christe. Now, we will be talking about what happens in each of these things in a very detailed fashion. So this is just me giving you the overview of the names of the parts. What we'll see is that there are several steps to photosynthesis and to cell respiration, and each step happens in a different part of it. So in photosynthesis, for example, there are two parts. One part happens in the thylakoids, the other part happens in the stroma. In the mitochondrion, we have those two parts, and the second and third step happen respectively in those two parts. Uh, John, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Okay. So what we'll do next is we'll talk in a very general way about what happens during photosynthesis and cell respiration, which is the very first thing that your textbook uh, told you about. So I made this little overview chart type thing, and we're just going to fill in what is happening in general during photosynthesis and what is happening in general during cellular respiration. So you can see here that I put a picture of a chloroplast and a picture of a mitochondria to represent whether or not we're talking about photosynthesis or cell respiration. And then I additionally put a picture over here on the side. I think everyone is pretty confident that plants perform photosynthesis. And there's a word that your textbook used that I would also like to use. And the word is autotroph. Any organism that can make its own food is an autotroph. Auto means by yourself, troph which refers to how you meet your energy needs. So an autotroph makes its own food, and it's actually a better term to use than just plant, because plants aren't the only things that can do photosynthesis. There's some bacteria that can perform it as well. Now on this side, it might seem like the picture is just of a cow, but it's very clearly of a cow and of some grass. And what I want to make sure everyone is aware of right from the beginning is that cellular respiration does not only happen in animals. Plants perform cell respiration also. If they didn't, they would die. So I want to make sure everyone is aware that autotrophs can perform cell respiration, and so can heterotrophs. A heterotroph gets its food from somewhere else. Hetero means different and troph means meeting your energy needs. So an autotroph gets its own food. A heterotroph has to get its food from somewhere else. Those are two really general words to indicate that basically everything that's alive does cell respiration. If you want to be living and you are made of at least one cell, you perform cell respiration. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is this. Photosynthesis has to happen during the day. At least part of it does. Because photosynthesis doesn't happen unless there is light. Uh, and in general, there is no sunlight at nighttime, except if you are talking about the summer solstice in the North Pole, then yes, there is light during the nighttime because there's light all day. But most of the time, we need daylight for this to happen because we need the sun. Cell respiration happens during the day or during the night. So if I had to distinguish between these two processes, photosynthesis is more specific. Only autotrophs do photosynthesis only during the day because we need sunlight. Cell respiration happens in any living organism anytime. So there's no limits on it like that. 
Now, would anyone like to ask any questions about any of that information? So this is where we're going to pause.